last week's report ended with a pivotal riders meeting. Based largely on forecasts of torrential rain, we decided not to go to Fairbanks, then north to Prudhoe Bay, the iconic adventure rider destination. Instead, we explored the stunning Kenai Peninsula south of Anchorage, more snow-capped mountains with their heads in the clouds. To visit this 300-foot thick glacier requires a boat, float, plane, or helicopter, all yours at the swipe of a credit card. The boat ride added sea lions to our list of Alaska wildlife sightings and speaking of wildlife, one visitor center offered a variety of advice. Let's focus on one specific strategy, and I'll give that a moment to fully sink in. Fortunately, bear eat mostly salmon. Those are salmon spawning in a roadside river. And apropos of nothing, this is me escaping the rain by riding between the rails into a two-and-a-half-mile railroad vehicle and motorcycle tunnel en route to Whittier. Pretty weird. A bit more on the subject of rain. Precipitation is ever present in Alaska in the summer. But most every time the black clouds moved in and we were sure we'd get soaked, the clouds parted and the sun broke through. We think of it as serial divine intervention. Here's the best example. Look closely below the lifting fog. That's Mount McKinley. It's usually socked in, but we arrived to find the mountain at its most magnificent, 20,000 feet high, a sun-drenched wonder to behold. An hour later, it was raining. Oh, yeah, the geographically astute will note that Mount McKinley is on the way to Fairbanks. That's right, Fairbanks, where this squadron of serious-looking Texas-based adventure bikes bivouacked in our hotel parking lot. This guy seemed particularly serious. He stopped here for a fresh tire and an x-ray, having injured his ankle battling mud on the Dempster Highway. But didn't I just tell you we had decided not to go to Fairbanks? What's going on here? Actually, it's the best of both worlds. Having seen the Kenai Peninsula, Chris and I decided to ride up to the Arctic Circle and take each other's pictures. After all, we build this as Dave's Arctic Adventure. Truth in advertising and all that. To get to the Arctic Circle, you take the Dalton Highway. The Dalton isn't like most highways. One leaves the asphalt behind, and for most of its 425-mile run to the Arctic Ocean, this is a dirt or gravel road. With perfect road and weather conditions, we did about a third of that, more divine intervention. Note the Dalton in the background. It's the only road out here. But it's easy to imagine the difficulty of this lonely path through the middle of nowhere when it's ankle-deep in mud or mid-August snow. Often close together, the Dalton and the Alaska Pipeline are symbiotic. Supplies and equipment go up the road north to the North Slope oil fields. The oil comes back south down the pipeline. Each is an engineering feat in its own right. Without them, this wilderness would belong exclusively to the bears and the caribou. There are frequent reminders that the Dalton belongs to the trucks. This is their habitat, not ours. We motorcyclists are interlopers wise to steer clear, give them room to do their work, and appreciate the opportunity to visit their world and borrow their road. And so, we cross the Yukon River with much less difficulty than those miners in that famous old Johnny Horton song, and made it as far north as we're destined to go. Well, at least on this trip. Chris and I never say never. Look who's here. Two of those four BMW riders from Texas showed up. Turns out one of them's from New Zealand, reminding us that this has been kind of a people, places, and things trip. The people I've been able to ride with, the places we've gone, not least the Arctic Circle, and riding that thing 7,000 trouble-free miles have combined to make this one of the best motorcycle rides of my entire life. But right now, I'm suffering a little wind tunnel withdrawal. I'm going to put the bike in the truck, I'm going to get on an airplane, and get my butt back to work. I'll see you next Sunday night.